Hello, everyone. This is Wang Zichen with Xinhua News Agency. I'm giving you a live broadcast from uh, the city of Qingdao in East China's Shandong province. As you can see behind me, I'm standing, you know, uh, in front of uh, some paddy fields. This is no ordinary paddy fields or rice plants. As you can see, they are abundant here. They are the, the experiments of Yuan Longping, known as China's father of hybrid rice. While Norman Ernest Bullock, the American agronomist and the winner of the 1970 Nobel Peace Prize, may be better known to the English-speaking world, Yuan Longping is famous for developing the first hybrid rice varieties in the 1970s and credited with playing a big role in feeding China. Some types of hybrid rice species, thanks to Yuan's cultivation, yielded considerably more than common ones, putting China in the lead worldwide in rice production. At present, as many as 50% of China's total rice fields grow Yuan Longping's hybrid rice species and yield 60% of the rice production in China, which has a huge population of 1.3 billion. But what we, are, what we are bringing you today is Yuan Longping's current research. It is right here on the eastern coast of China. The place we are in is called Qingdao Saline Alkali Tolerant Rice Research and Development Center. The center, as you can see, has filled these fields with rice species from across China and some from outside China to see if these Rices will yield high production and, in particular, in saline alkali soils. According to the International Rice Research Institute, the world's premier research organization dedicated to rice science, millions of hectares in the humid regions of South and Southeast Asia are technically suited for rice production, but are left uncultivated because of salinity and other problems with the soils. In China, we have the same problems as well. It is estimated that there are a hundred million hectares of saline alkali soil. Same, in, same as in South and Southeast Asia, these land are not planted with crops because the yield is too low and farmers simply can't make a profit. But there is also huge potential here. 
Worldwide, the research to overcome salt-related problems is based on two approaches. First, change the growing environment. In other words, make the land normal, suitable for the growth of plants. Or the second, what we are witnessing today, is to select the crop and change its genetic architecture so that it could be grown in the salty areas. The first approach, which is to change the land, involves major engineering and soil amelioration process, which need a lot of resources and are often out of the reach of small farmers. The second approach, breeding crop varieties with inbuilt salt tolerance, is realized as the most promising, less resource-consuming and economical approach. And that is what Yuan Longping and his colleagues here in the Sailing Alkali Tolerant Rice Research and Development Center are doing. The rice plants you see, they are being harvested as we speak. And the scientists and the staff will measure how much they wait after having finished the harvest. The scientists told us they are targeting 300 kilograms of rice per mu. So what is mu? It is a Chinese unit of counting land. 15 mu equals a hectare. So that means the scientists here are targeting 4.5 metric tons of rice per hectare. The difference between the land you are seeing and the ones you may see outside uh, your home in the country yard is that the land here, they are sailing. Should the Chinese scientists reach their goal, and they sincerely believe they do, it could make a huge difference here. It is estimated that if one-tenth of the saline alkali soil is cultivated in China, the country could produce an extra 30 billion kilograms of rice and feed an extra 80 million people. But how would they do it? Existence of genetic variability for salt tolerance within species is of paramount importance. To achieve that, scientists have to engage in an extensive collection of seeds. Here, you are not seeing just the one kind of rice. Actually, there are over 200 kinds of rice that you may tell their difference from just from the outer look of it. But there are over 200 kinds of rice here. They, they took good care of them and they planted uh, all these kinds of rice in those lands starting in April and then now it's been five months or so. The time has come for the harvest. In Chinese Mandarin, saline alkaline tolerance rice is also frequently referred to seawater rice or just sea rice because the seawater is much more saline than fresh water. The Qingdao Saline Alkali Tolerance Rice Research and Development Center is actually located just on the coast. And the water housing the rice plants is literally from the sea, which is just 100 meters away. But of course, it's not just pure seawater. I was told by the scientists that, generally speaking, the salinity of seawater is about 3.5%, and that would be too salty for any rice. Here, scientists made some dilutions to the seawater that is piped, pumped in from, you know, just nearby. And uh, they made the salinity rate to about 0.6%, which is around the same as most sailing land. We were told that sea rice growing out of saline and alkaline has more mineral content than ordinary rice you eat because salty water contains higher micro elements such as uh, uh, calcium. In addition, less fertilizers may be required because of the enrichment of micro element. Also, it's difficult for pathogenic bacteria to grow on bare lands, which is saline and alkaline land. So the rice potentially growing on these lands are less likely to be exposed to pests or diseases. 
Therefore, there would be less use of pesticides. The scientists here in Qingdao, East China, said that if they succeed, the seawater rice, seeds and planting techniques could also be exported, such as to countries in Southeast Asia and South Asia. They are the countries along China's Belt and Road Initiative. And it is estimated that in Southeast Asia alone, it has a total of 20 million hectares of saline alkaline soil. That is uh, told us by Yuan Longping, the renowned Chinese scientist earlier. Within each paddy field, underneath the rice, actually there is a tag. So each and every small area, the scientists could identify exactly which kind of rice it is growing here. And while we cannot see this, there are also numerous sensors built within these paddy fields so that the scientists could monitor and observe the growth, the different periods of growth of the rice. As you can see, one of the staff has gone into the center of the paddy field, and he is about to take some harvests. For those of you who just joined us, this is Wang Zichen with Xinhua News Agency giving you a live broadcast from Qingdao, East China's Shandong province. What you are seeing and uh, where I'm standing is a dozen experimental paddy fields where Chinese scientists, led by Yuan Longping, China's father of hybrid rice, are trying to see if they could plant certain types of rice in very salty environments. The scientists at the Qingdao Saline Alkali Tolerant Rice Research and Development Center have been pouring diluted sea water to water the rice, and they are expecting a harvest today. Why they are doing this? Because according to the International Rice Research Institute, millions of hectares in the humid regions of South and Southeast Asia, as well as in large parts of China, this land are technically suited for rice production, but are left uncultivated because of high salinity of these soils. In China, it is estimated that there are 100 million hectares of saline alkali soil. Same as in South and Southeast Asia, this land are not planted with crops because the yield is too low and farmers can't make a profit. The harvest is going to take a while, and after that, the workers and scientists will measure their weight. So as we bring you live broadcasts of the scene in Qingdao, our colleagues in Beijing may play some prepared videos that we did in the morning with Chinese experts. You may be seeing three Chinese experts talking about the paddy fields, how they get it done, where do they get the 200 odd uh, different kinds of raw rices? And uh, what is their target for the rice growing on uh, salty islands? Uh, can you tell us about a little bit about yourself? Can you tell us about yourself? Can you tell us about yourself? I'm Yang Hongyan, I'm from the Qingdao Hai Shui Dao Yanjiu Fajan Zhongxi Dao Yujong Gong Cheng Shi, B.A. from Nanjing Nong Ye Da Xue. Her name is uh, Dr. Yang Hongyan, and she graduates from Nanjing Agricultural University, which is one of the premier agricultural universities in China, with a doctorate uh, degree from uh, in agriculture, and uh, she is an engineer at uh, the uh, Qingdao Saline Alkaline uh, Tolerance Rice Research and Development Center. So, uh, can you tell me about the work you do here? Can you tell us about your work here? Can you tell us about your work here? Can you tell us about your work here? Yes, I'm the director of the Hai Shui Dao project. I'm the director of the Hai Shui Dao project and the two projects of the Hai Shui Dao project. Is it too long? says she's in charge of the research and the development of the uh, saline alkaline rice tolerance uh, tolerance rice 
development here at the research center and uh, she is uh, uh, responsible for you know identifying uh, which kind of the uh, specific rice is tolerant for uh, saline and alkaline kind of land so I'm asking her what is the difference between the uh, kind of rice she is developing here from the rice that we eat. Many of us in China rely on rice as a staple food. What is the difference between them? Mm. 海水道是那一年水稻的俗称,它主要是生长于这个内陆盐碱地和这个沿海滩涂。呃,所以这个海水稻只是一个形象的说法,是这样是吗? Uh, uh, she says that uh, the, de the development she does here, you know, it's called uh, sea water rice or sea rice, but it's not actually grown in sea water. This is just a paraphrase for, you know, rice that is grown on salty islands or on the shores, you know, as the sea water passes through, the land is, has more higher salinity uh, degrees than, you know, the Euro common land that we see on the, uh, on the you know, Chinese mainland or anywhere else. These海水道,它在这个盐碱地上生长,跟比如说其他在一般的土地上生长有什么难度是在哪里呢? Uh, I'm asking her, you know, the difficulty for to develop the specific uh, sort of rice that could uh, be grown on the sailing lands. What is the uh, you know, difficulties for the uh, this kind of crop? Uh, uh, 在哪里就是一般的话如果把咱把一般陆地上的水稻放在这个呃放在这个盐碱地上生长的话它的产量可能是多少这个为什么可能就是一般的水稻在这就可能用的不好呢嗯呃就是说一般的水稻在这个盐
land. So, uh, can you tell us about the you know the salinity of the water that uh, you know these uh, tests are doing? 就是这些这个水稻的，现在咱们把它种在这里，这个呃水质包括这个土质的盐度大概是多少？嗯，呃，前期的时候我们是用了一个千分之三呃的盐度，后期我们把它增大到了一个千分之六，呃，这个千分之六吃呃尝起来就有点像我们的菜汤的那种咸度。好的，呃。这个跟这个海水的咸度比起来，大概是一个什么水平？嗯，那个纯海水它的呃盐度是在千分之三十到四十。呃，那一般的盐碱地的咸度大概是多少？嗯，这个不同的地区它的盐度会不一样。大概一个概念可能是，就跟咱们千分之三或者千分之六差不多是吗？嗯，呃，有时候会比这个还要高一些。So, uh, these rises. They are growing in the water which ha and the soil which has a salinity of uh, zero, uh, of 0.3 percent to 0.6 percent, uh, but they are you know uh, not as high as those waters in the sea which is around uh, 千分之呃海水是呃三十到四十呃 the salinity of uh, sea water is around uh, three or four percent. Uh, but that would be too salty for any kinds of rice. So they did some dilution of the seawater and we are testing the rices in this a uh, little bit uh, lower uh, salinity uh, lands. But you know these kind of uh, salinity uh, saline lands, they are around uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 uh, percent. And they are just about the same as the saline alkali land that we are seeing around China and maybe somewhere else. 好的，谢谢您、嗯、，Thank you very much.、嗯、Here we have Dr. Wang Keqiang, Division Chief of Technology Development, uh, Qingdao Saline Alkali Tolerant Rice Research and Development Center. So, uh, thank you, Wang Professor, for accepting our interview today. This, ah, not too much. I feel like we have quite a few professors here. Can you tell us about the research center's people's organization? Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Ah, 呃，硕士或者博士，因为我们在招聘的时候就已经明确了这个目标。呃，首先来源上是一些农业类的大学，啊、呃，再一个就是从学历上要求上是最低是硕士，啊、呃，呃，从专业来讲是农学类的，啊、呃。呃，就从三个条件来确定我们这个人员的这个呃在招聘的方面的一个要求，啊，从年龄构成来讲，呃，平均年龄应该是在嗯三十一岁左右吧。呃，将来可能是不是对学历的要求会越来越高？然后随着咱们这个业务不断的发展，不断的这个专业化程度会更高一些。呃，这是必然的。呃，去年的时候，我们招聘的时候还可以部分的，呃，稀缺专业的，要求是本科。然后今年随着我们公司的发展，要求越来越高，我们要求是最少是这个最低是硕士，呃，学位，而且还是呃农学专业的相关专业的。Mm. I just asked Dr. Wang that, you know, I noticed that there are a lot of doctors here um, and he told me that the minimum requirement for their employment here is that you have a master's degree in agriculture from China's renowned agriculture universities and uh, starting from next year and uh, later maybe they will only accept uh, uh, candidates with PhD degrees in agriculture or bio. 呃、uh, ，biotechnology and related sciences。呃，我就是咱们学历队伍这么高，研究的肯定也是一个高难度的这么一个课题吧？您能给我们介绍介绍今天这个活动，就是这个收获，这个他想可能达到一个什么样的目标？从哪些角度来证实咱们这个科研的这个一些取得的一些进展？啊，好的，呃，是这样的，我们是做的是耐盐碱水稻，呃，今天就是想通过这种测试，呃，结验收或者说验证啊、呃，我们取得的阶段性的成果，比如说，呃，我们这个产量，呃，是达到了是多少亩产多少公斤，是不是达到我们预期的目标？呃，这是产量，这是一个方面。另外一个方面呢，我们就要测一下我们这个耐盐碱度。啊，是达到了，是不是我们的目标？比如说是千分之五，还是千分之六？哎，同时，呃，这是两个，呃，同时第三个条件就是看我们这个，呃，比如说这个颗粒的大小啊，饱满程度啊，呃，来验证我们这个水稻的这个长势，啊，这三个指标吧。
these very highly educated, you know, scientists, what they are gathering today, and we will be broadcasting to you live this afternoon, is that they will harvest the crops that, uh, you know, specifically is rice uh, that they have grown on this saline and alkali land to see if they meet their, you know, uh, target. For example, how many kilograms will they be able to harvesting from this saline and uh, alkali land per acre or in Chinese unit called mu, which is one fifteenth of an uh, hectare. Uh,您的这个目标预期，咱们希望能达到亩产多少呢？ Uh, 呃，我们的预期目标是希望能达到呃三百公斤左右吧。然后这个是在一个百分之零点多少的一个盐碱度上呢？ 呃，是百分之零点六。so, so he is targeting that uh, 300 kilograms of rice per mu, which is around 4.5 metric tons per uh, hectare. Uh, that kind of harvest on uh, saline land, which has a salinity rate of around uh, uh, 0.6 percent. 这个这样一个成就应该来说在世界范围内都算是比较领先的这么一个成就是吗？哦，呃，是这样的，我们这个成果在嗯做了一个预期的一个估计，呃，在今年的六月份的时候啊，我们通过这个专家的一个一个评审